Hi, this is Jason with RPC Electronics, and this is uh, Lesson 4 of the Eagle Tutorial. Uh, in Lesson 3, we started this new uh, schematic for, uh, for our first uh, real project. And uh, I'm not going to go over everything I just did in Lesson 3. Uh, if, if you need a little recourse or a little a refresher, go back and watch it, and then watch this one. Um, First thing we're going to do is a couple of little housekeeping things with what we already have here on the screen. That's just a matter of uh, some conventions and uh, making the schematic a little easier to read. Plus we have a little bit of function that we need to do. First thing we need to do is uh, some people might notice that we're missing a ground off of this uh, power jack. Um, one thing with this particular power jack is it has a self-isolating pin, uh, pin 2. When nothing's plugged into the jack, uh, the function is that pin 2 and 3 are tied together. And when a plug has been plugged in, pin 3 will actually disconnect from pin 2, isolating the two. So, uh, in this case, we don't need that function. So, the easiest thing to do is actually tie them together, short them together. So, no matter what is plugged in or unplugged, you always have... Uh, a direct connection there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our copy tool and we're going to copy the ground and we're going to come in here and we're going to pop a ground in there and this ground is going to get tied to the jack and we'll use our wire tool and in the previous uh, uh, lesson I believe I called this the line tool uh, if you hover over it it tells you wire if you look down the bottom left it says draw a line so you choose what you want to call it uh, I'm going to refer to it as the wire tool uh, we're going to click once on the ground, we're going to click once on this pin, and then we're going to click a second time on this pin, and then we're going to click again to disconnect away from, or uh, to get the tool to uh, to uh, release the uh, wire. Another thing that uh, we'll want to do, and this is just a convention thing, we know that this connection has been made because we physically did it by clicking on it. Uh, but to ensure it as well as for a visual aspect, we're going to use the junction tool again and we're going to put a junction right there where this pin comes midway into a wire. And again, that's more of a uh, convention, but it's also functional as in if uh, you want somebody to be able to look at the schematic and discern whether that pin is connected or not. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Another uh, little housekeeping thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give these capacitors values since we didn't do that in the first lesson. And in this case, we're going to give these a value of 0.1 microfarads per cap. So that looks good. All right. Next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and add in our LED. And in this case, <coughs> where uh, Eagle can some be sometimes cryptic with the naming convention, in this case, the library is actually called LED. The one thing you want to be careful though is that all of these parts underneath the LED are, most of these are user submitted custom parts. In this case we just want a standard T3 and a quarter LED which is going to be under the this little sub LED section and that would be the 5 millimeter LED so let's go ahead and click on that and let's go ahead and put that LED in the schematic and while we're at it let's go ahead and get a uh, current limiting resistor we're going to go to the RUS and this part right here will be a eighth watt uh, flat laying uh, resistor I'll go ahead and uh, change this so you can see that a little bit better it's a flat laying it will lay flat on the on the uh, PCB so let's click OK and uh, another quick little tip is anytime you need to change the orientation you can very easily just right click your mouse and it will change the orientation of the part and we're going to go ahead and add this part right now and now what we need to do is get power to this LED as well as a ground so let's use our copy tool again and we use, we'll copy our 5 volt pole and now they have done that in lesson 3 we mentioned that anywhere a 5 volt point like this is added on schematic these points are going to be all tied together so I can have a schematic with a hundred of these if I want and if I do they're all going to be tied to the 5 volt bus coming back to the voltage regulator same thing with these grounds. Even though these grounds aren't physically connected to each other on the schematic, they're all tied to the same ground, giving to the same ground potential. All right, we're going to copy the ground as well while we're talking about it, and we're going to go ahead and add that to the resistor. So now we effectively have a complete schematic with um, a uh, source of power, the filtering caps, the voltage regulator, the LED, and the limiting resistor. Um, 
while I'm uh, now that we've done that, we're we're at a good stopping point. But I'm gonna explain a couple of little tools up here on the top, and these are tools you're gonna use a lot. One of them, uh, you'll notice uh, what I just did. If I zoom out and I want to zoom back in on the schematic, I can zoom in, but I have to kind of hover my mouse in the exact place, and then I kind of have to play with it to get it to zoom uh, so it's centered and full size. Well, they have a little tool up here. There's a magnifying glass with a little white square or a little white rectangle in it. If you click on that, it's called the fit tool. It's going to automatically fit the schematic to the screen size that you're working with. You also have a zoom in and you also have a zoom out and that's the uh, magnifying glass with a plus and a minus. And those those are the three most used tools that you're going to use when uh, zooming and navigating. Also, I always recommend a wheel mouse. A wheel mouse makes a lot of uh, tedious movements very easy because you can simply hover over a specific section and zoom in or zoom out very easily and again if you get zoomed to just kind of a funky position where you can't quite get it the way you want it just click that fit tool and it's gonna put it right back where it belongs so we're gonna go and stop here and in the next uh, in the next lesson we're gonna add a couple things to this schematic and once we're happy with uh, the, the way the schematic is then we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, start laying out our, our first board. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in Lesson 5.